up everybody it's your boy bq here at the impact lounge i know i haven't done any kind of upload in a couple weeks um you know i, I think i said in my last upload that I'm, I'm taking it kind of easy post slam reversary to you know avoid getting burnt out which has had you know caused some issues for me in the past sometimes the big pay-per-views do a, a number on me and you know i was working real hard with the channel during Slammiversary, so I want to do good work again during Bound for Glory, so, you know, I'm, I'm taking things a little bit easy, not trying to make content for the sake of content, uh, but there's a couple things I want to talk to you guys about, and uh, it's not ideal for me to do this uh, on the road, <laughs> but I, you know, this is just what's working out for me at the moment. Right now, I'm active duty. I'm working two days a week, Tuesday and Thursday from home. And, uh, no, Tuesday and Thursday on base, and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday at home. Uh, but my kids are always home those days. Uh, they, they just finished summer, but even now, remote learning from school, they're home all three of those days. So it's been a little difficult for me, even if I wanted to create content. Um, but I'm, I'm working on a couple different content pieces that hopefully, you know, around Bound for Glory build, what, you know, start getting out there. But so there's a couple things I want to talk to you guys about first. Um, my thoughts right now um, on EC3 and Ring of Honor. Um, I haven't been on social media a whole lot, so to my knowledge, this is not just a rumor, it's true. If, if I'm wrong with that, please correct me in the comments. Um, as far as him showing up in Ring of Honor, I haven't watched Ring of Honor in a long time, mainly because of the style of wrestling I find to be exhausting. Um, and AEW has a problem too sometimes. Near fall, near fall, near fall. Um, EC3 will make me turn on Ring of Honor. If he, if I know that he's showing up, I absolutely will tune in and to see what he's doing. But this does pose a, a bit of a problem for me um, as a fan, as a viewer. We get EC3 come back. He's not exclusive to the company. We have... Deanna Perrazzo not exclusive to the company. Um, the Good Brothers are, in, you know, they're with Impact and they're repping for Impact, but they're also, you know, doing New Japan. And when you go back to like TNA, you know what? Even prior, just prior to Anthem buying the company, even when, when things weren't good, when it was just TNA still, people, you watch TNA. And you knew you were watching TNA, like it just, the stars felt like TNA stars. You know, whether they came from another company or they were homegrown talent, originals, whatever, like you were just watching TNA. And like, for me now, it feels like I'm watching a, a collective of just random wrestlers show up. Like, I don't feel like it's the, the, e, the TNA EC3. I just feel like it's EC3 and he's making a stop by the company um, but he's going to do it. And, and that's great. He's doing his, you know, the controlling his narrative. That's wonderful. I'm not at all discounting what EC3 is doing. I just mean as a fan watching Impact, it just seems like we're getting so many people who are just not really exclusive to the company. And then we get, you know, the Tineal Dashwoods who don't represent for the company whatsoever. Um, you got the Ken Shamrocks who's tweeting at WWE, open, openly campaigning to work with them. You know, so that's just an issue right now that I'm having as a fan is, is, is I don't feel like connected to a lot of the wrestlers on the screen because I feel like I can see them anywhere else. Now here, here's the difference with, so like Thunder Rosa is gonna be at the AEW pay-per-view with the NWA women's title. This is the difference with that. And the difference with like when Marty Scroll was gonna was doing work with NWA and, and, and Nick Aldis was hopping over to Ring of Honor. The difference is with what Impact is doing is that they're they're gonna be acknowledging these companies on screen. So like at the AEW pay-per-view, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna say it's the NWA women's champion, she's gonna have the NWA belt, you know what I mean? To where you get EC3 going to Impact, you get the Good Brothers in New Japan, uh, say Gianna Perrazzo wrestles somewhere else, even though she's a knockouts champion. They're they're not going to acknowledge Impact on screen. There's there's a difference between letting people work wherever they want and then actually partnering with these companies. So that's something that I hope that we see, you know, improvement on because 
Impact was was the company that was trying to spearhead this movement of people working together, the companies working together. But it's just funny because now they're on the outside looking in of that. You know, they're partnering with these like small companies that that's not really on that many radars. So even though they're doing goodwill within the wrestling community, the, the, the growth is kind of at a snail's pace in that in that sense. So I hope that we get to that point to where, you know, say Deanna Prazo shows up on another wrestling program like AEW. They say, you know, it's the Impact Knockouts champion. I don't think that would happen. And I don't think if EC3 shows up at Ring of Honor, they're going to act like he's an Impact talent, you know? And, and that's the difference between, like what I'm saying, Thunder Rosa showing up on there and then, you know, NWA and, and Ring of Honor crossing over. You know what I mean? There, there's a big difference there. So, um I just hope that the EC3 run, though, you know, kind of get back to him that he's doing with Impact, working with Moose. I hope we get something good out of that, and I hope we we feel we've been wanting EC3 back for a long time. But I mean, if it's a short term, you know, it would kind of suck. Sorry about the GPS there. Um, next thing I want to talk about, Rohi Raju, Raju is the X Division champion. You know, most most of you know that I'm a real big fan of his. And I know Lewis is a big fan of his. And some of my concerns with the X Division Championship is that we got this like real short, unimportant title reign with Willie Mack. We got a title reign with Chris Bay that was nothing. And what are we gonna get with Rohit, you know? As much as I am a fan of his and love his talent, and you know, Lewis brings it up all the time. You watch his indie work like we're, we're just seeing a small portion of what he's really truly capable of because Impact is not, you know, pulling the trigger on him. It's hard to imagine him defending the X Division Championship at Bound for Glory because he doesn't even, they don't even use, really use him on the pay-per-views to begin with, except they use them for, um, to face Scarlet Bordeaux at like one of the, paper, I forgot what pay-per-view it was, Rebellion or something like that. So that's, that, that is my concern with the X Division Championship. I wish Rohit would have strung together some victories and had some kind of momentum. And then as far as the storyline, I think we all knew he was going to win the, the title. I mean, I don't know win the title, but kind of, you could just either say win the title or screw back Chris Bay over in the, in the fashion that he did. I think we all saw that coming, but it was really rushed. That's what was like really odd to me is that they could have like really drawn this story out for a little bit so that we could invest in Chris Bay as the champion, invest in Rohit as, you know, the sneaky, the sneaky dude. But they didn't do that. They, they, they just, they really, really rushed it. So that is just odd to me that they did that. And I'm, I'm a little concerned about uh, the X Division Championship right now. Excuse me. I'm a little concerned about the X Division Championship right now and where where they're going with it. Um, and, and if it's gonna start losing its importance again. I hope that he's a guy that can get a run with it and really do something with it. Um, next thing I wanted to touch on, Wrestle House. Uh, I haven't, you know, I did one review on it and uh, I love Wrestle House. Um, I'm really enjoying Wrestle House. I, I was, you know, I was tipped off a little bit not ticked off, tipped off a little bit before we saw it and knew what to expect, you know, and um, I kind of told a couple of those close to me, you know, uh, think of reality show meets final deletion. And um, I've, I'm, I've really been enjoying it. Uh, as corny and cheesy as it is, I, I commend anything that's original and different and trying something new. You know what I mean? I'm always, I'm always all about that. Doesn't matter what the company is. So I, I really enjoy Wrestle House. Um, the empty arena shows, you know, I kind of touched on this on a, on a previous upload. When you think empty arena wrestling, that's what Impact Wrestling is giving you. And, you know, myself, TW, we, we both talked about Impact taking the opportunity to uh, put their own spin on empty arena wrestling. And you know they really haven't. That's that's one thing. I'm that's the one thing I'm really like disappointed in right now. I think the show is good, and and uh, you know for me the commentary is better because Madison's doing it instead of Don. Um, 
you know, Wrestle House I'm, I'm really enjoying. You know what I mean? So I think everything's good. The matches are good. But again, when you think empty arena wrestling, that's exactly what you get when you watch Impact. And I did, you know, I talked about this in the past, you know, what are, are the arenas too empty? And, and most of the comments on YouTube were people saying, well, the, you know, COVID-19 and they don't need it. I've never said they needed people. You know, I, I said that that's a possibility, but I brought up, you know, the NBA uh, and WNBA is not doing it. NBA doing virtual fans, um, you know, MLB, WNBA, all these sports are piping in crowd noise. You know, I'm, I'm a big basketball fan, uh, actually well beyond a wrestling fan. And, uh, when I watch the when I watch the the games, they're not like empty stadium games. Like, you know, be, I'm sure to the players they are, but the way they piped in crowd noise and used music and and, and everything, like they've made a, a very creative environment to where it doesn't feel like you're just watching basketball in an empty arena. And then you know, WWE ended up doing the virtual fans. I brought up the virtual fans before, which I knew wasn't something Impact would do, but. I want to see them step up and do something original and different and put their own spin on this empty arena stuff because the empty, like, hollowed out, echoey arena was cool for a set of tapings or two because everyone was, everyone was at that level, you know? But now we're progressing in, in everything and everyone's making adjustments and everybody is doing something different and finding a way to make the fan experience better. And I don't feel that Impact is doing that. So that's something that I hope to see improvement on. I don't know if it's gonna happen. So that's, uh, those are just my thoughts. And again, this is not the way I prefer to do content, holding up my phone, because um, I wanna be safe on the road too. But I really wanted to get a video out to you guys. So. Thanks for checking me out. Um, hopefully you won't have to wait this long for something else again. Talk to you soon. Peace.